I often get asked what I think about a particular training system. And I don't really know the particulars about other training systems because I haven't really studied them. And I certainly never talked to the founder of that system. So what the founder had in mind and then what's taught by the people who take the courses and then reteach the subject material often gets diluted over time and starts to change. And you can see that even happen in PRI uh, where people start to change some of the principles or they never really understood the overall principles and they're teaching it from a very, or they're trying to explain it from a very biomechanical sense when in reality it's very much less biomechanical and more about uh, sensing and energy. That's how I would explain it. So I started to look at a couple of pictures online and I saw one picture of a particular system and they were training and the caption was that they were training internal rotation. And so I figured that would actually be a good way of explaining the difference between why, or the difference between what postural restoration is doing and other things. Now, the question becomes, why are you training internal rotation? Now, there's a little story to this. So I was in New York a couple of years ago. I was doing a session, and I was doing a session with a, uh, a gentleman, a very large gentleman, a muscular and this big and he had played football in college. He was a Wall Street guy. Uh, he was kind of disbelieving of what I was doing, but his wife was actually making him take the session with me. Uh, so I had him on the wall in this 90-90 position with the feet on the wall, and I was observing his breathing. Remember, well, I'll get to that. So I was observing his chest. Was his chest moving with inhalation and exhalation? And I found it wasn't moving at all. And I noticed, because he was barefoot, I noticed that he had really high arches on his feet. I have high arches. People who have really high arches have a hard time grounding. Now, if, you're, if you can't ground, you can't create enough pressure through the pelvic floor, which I talked about, I think, in my last video, or two videos ago. Uh, and without that pressure, a properly pressurized pelvic floor, you can't expand the rib cage with air. So what I did with him and this was one of the more fast, amazing things I've ever seen. You know, he had the ball between his knees. The left knee was pushing into the ball, yet he felt he still, nothing was happening. And what I did was I took a little paper towel, which I folded it up, which I've seen, uh, which, which I've made videos about in the past, usually putting it on the right, underneath the right arch. Interestingly, I put it underneath the right arch this time, and actually it caused him lower back pain. I took it away and his back pain went away. So he was intrigued, didn't understand what just happened, but he realized that that little paper towel made him feel something. Now, I don't even know why that happened. That, that's not usually what would occur when I put a paper towel underneath the right, someone's right arch. Nonetheless, he felt pain, took it away, pain went away. Then I took the paper towel and put it underneath his left foot, underneath the left arch. And as I did that, his eye, have you, if you ever watch uh, Game of Thrones and Jon Snow, he dies and comes back to life and you know he's lying there dead and his eyes go, <sighs> and he starts breathing, right? His eyes go bug out and his, he starts breathing. That's what this guy did when I stuck that paper towel underneath his left foot. What that gave him was a sense of internal rotation internal rotation. And if you've ever heard of Joseph Campbell, he was America's foremost uh, uh, authoritative figure on mythology and religion. And of course, he realized that all the mythologies and religions of the world have the same underlying themes. He has a, in this book, he has a, uh, a chapter called The Journey Inward. And it's the journey inward. When you, when you, become fed up with the outside world and you really decide to figure out who you are and what you're made to be and what you're meant to do on this earth, you go on the journey inward and that's where you meet your fears. And that's, that's the difficulty of the path. That's the path. That's when you discover your path and that's when you discover all your fears. When you go inward, when you start to actually uh, ignore the outside and start concentrating on what it is that you want to do with your life. What is your life bringing you towards? Where is your energy going? 
And of course, the fears come up because oh, what are people going to think? This is not what I should be doing. What if uh, I don't make enough money? What if I, you know, what if, what if, what if? So all these fears pop up like I can't do this. That's the journey inward. That's what mythology is all about. That's the hero's adventure, the journey inward, where you discover yourself and then you discover yourself and you go back to the, and then you go back out. So you journey internally, internally, and then you move externally. Keep those two words in mind. Internal rotation and the journey inward, spiritually, psychologically, give you life. The moment I put that, that paper towel underneath his left foot, that left knee that was pushing into the ball got some meaning to his brain and he started to breathe and his body came back to life. I'll never forget it. Uh, and it was one of the most fascinating things. Without that grounding effect, that left knee pushing into the ball was not giving that left leg any internal rotation. Remember, in the left AIC pattern and the right BC pattern, the left leg, so here's my pelvis and here's the leg. I need a new uh, pelvis model that has legs. But so here you go. When the pelvis turns to the right, this is my right, pelvis turns to the right, the left leg would go with it, but it can't go with it, otherwise you'll just walk around in a circle. So what happens, the left leg will generally turn out and abduct. Now it's separating itself from the acetabulum, from the hip joint. That's why so many people have loose left hips. When this goes on for too long, because the pelvis never turns to the left and the left leg never turns in, they never screw any in, in on each other, that's when you develop that weak and very pathological left hip. So we need to switch that situation. This left hip needs to turn to the left as the pelvis turns to the left and the left leg needs to turn in. That's what's called, well, internal rotation. And in PRI it's called AFIR and FAIR, which is the A is the acetabulum. That's what the leg sits in, internally rotates on the leg and the leg internally rotates on the hip. That is internal rotation. That is what brought his body back to life. That is the journey inward. So I don't know why other systems train internal rotation. I train, I want people to internally rotate on their left side and also the left ribs are externally rotated. So they need to come down also, which gives you the left ZOA. You're gonna to wanna to look that up if you don't know what that is. Internal rotation of the ribs to get a ZOA Internal rotation of the leg and pelvis stabilizes that left side, but why? Why do we care so much about that? Well, we want a stable left side, but this is it. So that you can still get air into your upper right chest so you can breathe with your diaphragms and not use your neck. Because once you become neckized, once your neck is too overactive, you get pulled into extension and nothing changes. You're still hurting. You still can't breathe properly. You're overusing your extensor muscles, your lower back, your hip flexors, and your neck. You can't rotate. You can't internally rotate and externally rotate. You get stuck in one position. On the left, you get stuck in an externally rotated position. So there's no internal rotation of the left leg and there's no internal rotation of the left ribs. And on the right side, you get stuck in an internal rotation position. So the right leg is generally stuck in an internally rotated position and the right ribs are usually stuck in an internally rotated position. That's the pattern. So what you need to do in order to get the right side to open up so you can actually go to the left and thus get air into the upper right side of the rib cage. And if you looked at two videos ago when I did left piriformis pain with my friend, I say in that video that what we were trying to do with the left side was get air into the upper right chest so it can open with air so she doesn't use her neck to breathe. That's it. That's why you train internal rotation from a PRI perspective. This has to stabilize on the left side so the right side can open up and accept air. If that does not happen, your body will shift back over to the right and you'll re-engage your neck as a breathing muscle and now you can't rotate your neck properly, you can't rotate your torso properly, you can't rotate your pelvis properly, which means your legs won't rotate properly, 
and your arms won't rotate properly, and now you're gonna have pain somewhere. It can be anywhere, left side, right side, shoulder, hip, foot. Your foot will never go external, internal, supination, pronation. Your tibias, your lower legs will never do it. And when you can't do it, you're gonna to start to feel it in your knees, in your hips, in your lumbar spine, in your SI joints, in your mid back, in your neck, in your cranium, it's gonna to start to twist. You're gonna find a jaw that's off to the left or off to the right, one eye significantly higher than the other, one ear flared out, one ear closer to you. That's what happens when that inability to internally rotate a left femur on an acetabulum and an acetabulum on a femur, the inability to do that and compress on the left side causes those things to happen. And what is, what is it that will hold you in that pattern? Right here, the neck, the right SCM, the right scalenes, the right upper trap. As they continuously try to open up this close down right side, they're trying to help you breathe and you stay over on that right side, over on that right side, over on the right side, the left side weakens, you have no left side internal rotation, and you're lifeless. You can't breathe, you feel terrible, and eventually you might become externally rotated on both sides, which is a PEC, and now you're really stuck. So I'm pretty sure that other systems are not training internal, whatever their merits. I'm not saying they're terrible. I'm not, not comment, I don't comment on them at all, and it's gonna stay that way. But I'm pretty sure that's not their thought process. So just training internal rotation of a leg or an arm, you know, shoulder, you can do it, but why? But if it's not associated with the body weight being on one side or the other, it's not, I don't see it helping in the long run because it's not gonna change the breathing pattern. If you don't get internal rotation of the left leg, internal rotation of the left hip uh, or the left acetabulum is just this screwing motion while the left abs are on, then you're not going to make a dent in that right shoulder. Not that they would be doing it for the right shoulder anyway, but that's why I would do it. So the right shoulder can, can get freed up again because this whole side expands and relaxes. So everything has to be lined up appropriately for the proper mechanics of the body to work. And in a PRI scheme of things, the journey inward is to allow your upper right chest wall to keep accepting air without restriction from the neck. Because once the neck turns on again, bad things start to happen. So hopefully that will clear some things up about why, you know, why PRI does things the way they do it and what the rationale is behind it compared to what you may read about other systems. So. If you thought that was an interesting video, if it helped, if you're going on your internal journey, your journey inward, and you like this video, please share it, like it, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'd appreciate it. Thanks.